Hi, this video is to help you with your Music Hub investment program application. Um, we're assuming that you have a, a Grantium username and that your user account is linked to the applicant profile that you wish to make this application from. If you're not quite at that stage yet, then you can visit the Arts Council website and uh, the Grantium support page will lead you through getting to that point. But for now, let's assume you're at that point. So we're going to go ahead and log in here. Um, this is a training version of Grantium, so everything has been set up for training purposes. To make a new application, click Browse Programs and then scroll down till you find the Music Hub option and click on the magnifying glass to get started. Read the information through, then click Apply Now. Then at this top screen, you need to select which applicant you want to make this application from. So if you're linked to more than one, make sure you're choosing the correct one. Um, some of you will only have one option there. Ignore the bottom half of the screen and then click Save and Next. At this point, you can either click to view your applicant profile to see if it needs editing, but otherwise just click Next. And you need to name your project and um, give it a memorable name as you will need this um, name to find your project later on. Click Save and Next. So we're now inside the eligibility questionnaire and it's just a case of filling this in screen by screen. So we'll read through the information and then click Next. And then you just need to answer these questions one, um, one by one. Um, so I'm just going to show you what happens if you do answer a question that would make your um, application Ill ineligible. You will get a message at the end of this step to let you know and it won't let you proceed any further. So I'm going to answer these questions to make sure that we're eligible. Um, I'm also going to answer them in such a way that it will open up the biggest possible application form. So Grantium works like a flowchart. Um, so the way you answer questions determine what screens and questions open up as you go. So I'm going to show you the biggest, longest possible option. So yes, I am a consortium for that purpose. So when you finish, click Save and Next. And again, just um, answer these questions. Um, yes, and then click Save and Next. And our activity appears eligible, so um, we can go on to make the application. You have to click Submit in order to progress. So click Submit and our application form will open. So on this screen, make sure in the top left hand corner that you've got the correct applicant selected that you're working from at the moment. At the applicant project name, make sure you've got the right project that we've just started. So ours was called Hub Application. And we can see our eligibility questionnaire was submitted and our application is ready for us to start working on. So we'll click into the orange folder to take us inside the application. So we're inside the application and again, it's a case of going through it screen by screen. So read this information and click next. And the next, these next two screens, so the applicant details and the address information, both pull through from the applicant profile. If you need to make changes, you have to come out of this and go back into your applicant profile to edit it. Again, if you need help with that, check out our Grantium support page. But otherwise, if everything's fine, just click next through these two screens. Then this is the contact screen, which again is pulled through from your profile. Um, if you do need to make changes for this particular project, you can do so here. So you can delete a contact. You can click to view and edit that contact if they change their phone number or email, or you can click here to add a brand new contact for this project. Once you finish, click next. So select which um, area you're applying from. And then, are you planning to lead another music hub? I'm going to say yes, because it opens up further screens for us to have a look at. Uh, click Save and Next when you're finished. So anytime you see one of these tables in Grantium, um, you need to look for the little Add button, which is always just up here, um, and add as many lines as you need to to this table. So it's asking us for the additional geographic areas we're applying from. So make your selection. And then you can either click to save and add another line to that table, or if you've finished, click save and back to list. 
And once you've finished that, just click next. So type in your answer here. Um, it's worth knowing that Grantium times you out after 20 minutes of inactivity. Um, it does give you a warning five minutes beforehand, but it's so worth knowing that Grantium can't tell when you're typing, only when you're clicking. So if you were to type away at something for 20 minutes without clicking save, you will lose your work. So remember to click save often. Um, some people prefer to draft their work in Word beforehand because of that and then copy and paste it in. That's totally fine to do, but just bear in mind that the character counts work slightly differently. So um, for example, in Word, when you hit enter to start a new line, Word counts that as one character, whereas Grantium would count it as two because it's line stop, line start. So it is just gonna be a bit longer than you think once you paste it into Grantium. Put your answer in the box and then click save and next so we've got a question here about consortium because we declared we were a consortium application again it's a table so we need to add a line and we basically need to add as many lines as there are for the consortium members so what's the organization name um, if you know their postcode you can click this box to use a postcode search if you don't know their postcode you can click this box here and manually type in their address and then just make sure you're selecting the correct local authority for that particular address. Type in a contact name and an email address for that person. Uh, if you've got more consortium members to add, click save and add another. Otherwise, if you've finished, click save and back to list. And once you've finished working on this screen, click next. Um, type your answer into the box here and click next, save it next. And then this is an important screen. So this is your Music Hub development plan and you need to list all of the key priorities and milestones for your proposed project. So there's a maximum of 50 rows you can add at this point. Um, so find that add button to start listing your first priority or milestone. So does this priority or milestone have a specific date attached to it or are you estimating a time period for it? If you choose specific date, it'll ask you for the date. If you choose an estimated time period, it'll ask you for the estimated start and finish dates. So I'm just gonna pop some dates in here. And type up your activity plan. Who's the task lead for this? Um, and then if you've, um, got identified any risks for this particular um, milestone type them in here if you've not got any risks then you can just leave that blank if you've finished adding your milestones and priorities you can click save and back to list if you've still got more to add you can click save and add another and just keep working through them once you've finished click save and back to list and they will all be listed out here and click next Type in your answer about partnerships and click save and next. And then again, what's asking us for a list of our partners. So this is a table. So we find the add button and then add these one by one. So what's the partner's name? If you know the postcode, you can click to use the postcode search get address and then you just select the correct one from the drop down once it's finished searching okay what type of partnership is this delivery strategic or both the status of the partnership and do you intend to use core revenue grant if you select yes to this question it will then ask you for an indicative amount so just type that in then type in your answer here and save and next. Sorry, save them back to list if you've finished your um, adding your partner details. If you've got more to add, click save and add another. Let's say we've finished, save them back to list. Finish that page, click next. So the next few screens I'm just going to whiz through because they are just type in a box and then click save and next. So some pages have one box, some have two. But for the next few pages, you're basically typing answers into boxes. Okay. 
Okay, and then governance and management. Again, you get a couple of box to type, boxes to type into. And then it does tell you at the bottom here that you are going to be able to upload an attachment to um, demonstrate your governance and management structure, such as a visual diagram. Again, if you're applying as a consortium, there will be an attachment um, space available for you to upload details on that. That's on the attachments page. We're coming to that. So this is just to let you know that that's coming up and you will have that opportunity. So we'll click save and next on that. These questions, top two questions pull through from your profile. If you need to edit those again, come out of here and go back into your profile. Otherwise we'll carry on from this question here. And then type your answer here and save and next. So we're now at the attachment screen uh, and this is where there's some mandatory documents you have to upload and then there's some optional ones. So you can see whether they're required or optional here. So the ones that say no, they're not required are optional ones. So pick the first document that you wish to upload. So click on the document type hyperlink. So this is confirmation of introductory conversation. Give your document a description. So proof of intro conversation. Then click to choose the file from your computer that you want to upload. And then click save and back to list. So do this for each one. So this is financial statements, choose the file, save and back to list. Then for the financial information template, there is a, temp a particular template that you have to download from the uh, from our website, fill in and upload. So you can only upload an Excel document um, for this particular one, and it should be that template that's filled in by you. Um, so if you want to, you can upload a governance and management structure um, diagram. And if you want to add something else to do with being a consortium, then there is an option for you to add that there. Um, once you've finished uploading everything, click next. Governance document pulls through from your profile. So if you need to change that again, come out of here, go into your profile. Otherwise, just click next. This is the monitoring information page. So um, you just need to fill this in quite carefully. So um, first of all, declare how many members of senior management and how many board members there are. So let's say that there was five of each. Then for each position, you have to declare each of these things. So if your chief exec is called something slightly different in their job title, you can type that in there. But otherwise, um, just fill in um, all of these questions for all of these people here. So make your um, options there. You have to fill in all four of those. Then the sections underneath, you need to say what the breakup is of these 10 people. What is their ethnicity to start off with? So maybe there's four British, two white and black Caribbean, and what's that added to six, four African, for example. So make sure that it's always adding up to that 10, those, those 10 people or however many you've declared. And you do that for each category. So sexual orientation, what's the split, socioeconomic, age, disability, neurodivergency, and so on. So fill in each section and make sure it always adds up to the number that you've declared up at the top. Once you've finished working on that page, click Save and Next. So this is the declaration. Read this through really carefully. Um, if you're able to, then you click to tick these declarations. If you're able to make these declarations. Um, again, there's a bank details declaration, so um, you need to read that carefully. And if you're able to, click it. Um, if you're not able to, you won't be able to submit. And then there's a question on subsidy control, um, which you will need to answer as well. The bottom question is only if it's applicable. So if you have a conflict of interest, you can declare it here. Um, but you can leave that section blank if, if it doesn't apply to you. Then click Save and Next. So this last page is a submission summary, which is on every step in Grantium. If you have all green ticks, you'll be able to click Submit. 
But if there's any red crosses, then there will be an error message here telling you exactly what's wrong. You can click on it and um, it will take you back to that page to, to finish off. So we didn't finish off the monitoring information. Uh, so that's what that's telling us here. But once you'd finish that off, you'd be able to click submit and then that would be it. Your application will have been submitted. So when you go to your submissions page, it will have a date submitted here. Um, you'll get an email to let you know once the decision's been made on your application. And again, this is the section you would come to submissions and you will have a notification here for you to open to let you know uh, if your application has been successful or not.